Hey everyone, welcome back to My Medieval Corner. Today, we're gonna do some projects. We're gonna make some tunics, a gambeson, play with some canvas, and turn a tool belt into a Viking belt of strength. You may also check out some chainmail. The trick with all these projects is to make them as cheap as possible while getting the desired results. By the end of this video, I'll have a whole new outfit. Then I'll quickly go over how I care for my armor post-training and talk about how I plan to upgrade my kit. These segments may seem short, but I wanted to emphasize how quickly and how easily these projects can be done. As always, we'll end the episode with a horn chug. We got a lot to do in this one, so let's get started. If there's one thing I love to do that doesn't involve violently hitting people with a deadly weapon, it's going to the thrift store. While I'm at my local Goodwill or DI, I keep a sharp eye out for things that I can repurpose into my medieval hobbies. It can be anything, really. Your imagination is your only limitation. But one thing I've found in abundance is fabric for tunics. Sometimes, I'll come across full reeds of fabric. And if not, I can usually find some quality bed sheets. You've hit the jackpot if you find good linen in your desired color. But today, we're gonna use some plain old white sheets. Try to get either queen or king size. Get them home and throw them into a bucket of bleach to damage the fabric. This will make it more accepting of the dye. And this will also be the most time consuming part of this project. It may take a couple dips. Stir it around and after about an hour, rinse it out. Once it's dry, put it back into the bucket with two bottles of your desired color. But be wary of the dye, cause you'll see I used two bottles of black, which should be enough to make it dark. But with sheets, they always turned out gray. It's okay for me because my house colors are black and gray. I haven't tried other colors, so take this project with a trial and error mindset. Anyways, stir it around and after about an hour, rinse it out and see if you need another dip. When the sheet is dry and the coloring is to your liking, I'd take an existing tunic that fits me well and I make my cuts. This is a pretty easy process. Fold the sheet horizontal, then vertical. Match up the tunic and cut. I use a basic V shape for the neckline. Bust out your sewing machine and stitch away. Always double fold your hems because I have learned the hard way that sheets will fray like crazy if you don't. Definitely add trim if you have it on hand. Here are two tunics that I have made this way. This project price can range from $10 to $20, depending on how fancy you want your tunic. Your biggest cost will be the dye. With this project, we're going to start with a canvas painter's drop cloth from either Harbor Freight or Home Depot. Much like the process used on the bed sheets, soak it in bleach to remove the coating of the fabric. Stir it around and I let this one sit overnight. Rinse it out and throw it into the washing machine with detergent to soften it up even more. Out of the dryer, you should notice a significant difference in the feel of the cloth. If not, then repeat the process. Put a couple bottles of dye into a bucket and throw in your canvas. Stir it around every now and then, and again, I'd let this sit overnight. Rinse it out, and there you go. Cut out the shape of your tabard and stitch the edges. Be sure to double fold your hems to avoid fray. Unless you're like me and you're into the damaged, battle-worn look. 
If you have heraldry, you can use the excess pieces of the canvas to make a patch. Then paint your device on it. Stitch it to the front and back of your tabard. Or you could paint it directly on. Either looks great. It doesn't end there. Canvas is a great fabric to use in medieval projects. You can make anything from shield covers to armor to garb with this material. This is a short cloak that I had made. This project can cost as little as $10 up to 20, depending on what you have on hand and what you need to purchase. Back at the hardware store, grab a moving blanket. Depending on your size, they may not be big enough to make a gambeson out of one. So you might have to grab two. I got lucky and was able to use one. I made this one into a basic, easy pullover tunic. If you're savvy with making garb, you can make this really cool by creating a doublet with a laced up front or a buckled front. Use pictures as a guide to see which style you'd like to make. Use as much of the existing trim as you can. This will cut down on later work. Once you have all your pieces, grab your sewing machine and let her rip. Bada bing, bada boom. Now you have a nice padded gambeson. Just an FYI. This won't be as padded or as protective as a true linen and wool one. But if you just want another layer under your armor to take the sting out of shots, or a quick padded gambeson for costume, here you go. This project can cost as little as $15 or as much as $25. If you couldn't tell by now, I'm a big fan of Harbor Freight. While you're there, grab a tool belt. It'll be the light, basic tan color. It looks raw and untreated. If you want it to have a nice, rich, dark brown color, I used Hubert shoe oil and gave it a few coats. Let each coat soak in. It may take a couple overnights of layering and drying, but it looks really good. Before you color the belt, take a minute to design what you want on the belt. You could do runes, a braid, a knot design. I encourage you to use your imagination on all projects. Mark it out with a pen so your design shows through. On this belt, I did runes to honor Thor's belt of strength, Megingoth. Instead of tooling in the runes, I burned them in with a wood burner. If you tool them in, you have to do this before you color. And I didn't have the patience to wet the leather, then tool and repeat. My knight once told me when we were making my gorget that if you want it beautiful and labor intensive, make it out of leather. If you want it now, make it out of steel. This is a pretty simple project, so have fun with it. Project cost, seven to 15 bucks. This is a hobby that I have been doing for years. In this quick bit, I'll explain how I take wire and turn them into rings. I'll also show how I do the basic four in one weave. For this project, you'll need a bucket, a steel rod, two pairs of pliers, some strong end nippers, and a coil of wire. Be wary of the wire you want to use. Some will be way too thick and some will be way too light. So you start off with a bucket and a steel rod. Put the steel rod in the vise, make the crank handle. Drill a small hole into the rod to hold the wire. Drill two holes into the bucket to hold your rod.
Then you put the end of the wire through the hole and you start cranking. You want the coil to be tight. It'll make the rings a consistent size. You can make the coil as long as you want. Take the end nippers and cut the wire from the rod. Repeat the process. You'll need a lot of coils for most projects and a ton of coils if you're going for a hauberk. Once you have a bunch, you cut the coils in a straight line. This is how you get your rings. Keep cutting until you're all out of coils. Take a handful of rings and close them up. Now you're ready to weave. Take four closed rings and one open. Throw all four into the one open one and close it up with the pliers. From here, you'll add two closed rings for every one open ring. To create multiple rows, you add one open ring, two closed rings, and from there, you add one open ring and one closed ring. Hopefully, you can see what I'm talking about in the video because when writing this script, even I got lost. I'm gonna let this play for a minute and hopefully it seems as easy as it really is. Steel wire is pretty cheap. You can get coils of 150 feet for around six to eight bucks in 14 gauge. I'd suggest that to start. I'm using copper wire that is left over from my day job, so this project costs me nothing. It's some really light gauge and I'm using it for garb, not armor. I'm going for a hauberk and this will take a lot of time and a lot of rings. This video is getting long, so I'm just going to give the general vibe. If you have a leather brigandine or leather kidney belt that absorbs a lot of sweat, you want to let it dry overnight and clean it with saddle soap. Get all that salt and sweat out of the leather. Once it's clean, you'll want to oil and condition the leather. This will make it last much longer. I use Hubert Shoe Oil because it helps oil, condition, and waterproof. That is really important because I sweat a lot. If you're making your own leather coat of plates, take the opportunity to seal the leather before plating. My gorget is sealed by the hardening process, and because it's essentially waterproof, I haven't had to do anything to it since. Like the belt project earlier, this may take a couple overnights of layering and drying. I'm telling you though, you won't regret it. Alright, let's wrap this up by upgrading my current kit. What I plan to do is to remove all these plastic plates and replace them with hardened steel. Since I want the steel to overlap, I'm gonna have to get creative with the sizing of the plates. I will create a cardboard template and go from there. I'm doing a lot of research on brigadines and I think I got a good idea of what I want to do. 
But since I can't find any fighter practices happening now, and my kit is not up to steel fighting standards, I want to take advantage of my time and get all this done. So hopefully when the time is right, I'll be ready. A productive day in the books deserves a drink. I got a new horn to chug out of, and we're going with an old favorite. Pub Beer by Ten Barrel Brewing Company. Skull. <sighs> Next time on My Medieval Corner, I'm going to talk about some personal things, such as why I'm a man-at-arms, not a squire, how I feel about masters-at-arms and knighthood, how to avoid burning yourself out on this sport and hobby. And I'll talk about camping events, what to expect, and I may tell a couple stories. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is a journey in medieval combat that we can all share.